I have been on the search for a local model that I can run and do basically my junior level work or my intern level work. So this would be stubbing out code, creating files, maybe doing simple functions, maybe creating new APIs, some SQL, stuff like that. And I believe I finally found a model that works incredibly well with root code. That model is Devstrel. And I'll get into the specifics of it, but I'm gonna go through some examples of what I've done. It is the first model that I've actually been able to run through my evals that I can run locally. I'll give you all the configuration that I'm using in LM Studio to actually run it. I'll also give you my thoughts on it versus some of the other models in the space. Now, if we back up a little bit here, what I will say is that it wasn't very long ago that the best models were making versions of pool or, or applications that are on the level of this. Now, this is a 23 point, let me make sure I get the number right, 6 billion, 23.6 billion parameter model. And I'm running the Q6 version of it you, from Unsloth. I did find that using the Unsloth variants actually score a little bit higher on my evals. Now, I haven't ran every variation, but compared to the LM Studio uh, specific one. This is the first model that can complete my entire eval set. So much so that I'm thinking about abandoning something I've been working on off to the side, which is creating a local model evaluation set because the limitations of running them in AI coding assistance were so bad that I felt like I needed to highly simplify down the problem. But that's not the case. I've ran, if you look over here in VS Code, I've ran Billards. I've ran a Python version of Billards, Connect 4, Connect 4 with no specifications. So I wanted to do a verification. Uh, I wanted to understand what it does with a game or an application that gets very specific specifications. I wanted to see what it could do with just kind of the more high level esoteric sort of, you know, build a Connect 4 game. I've got landing pages, uh, a maze, Sudoku, traffic, whiteboard, you name it, all of those worked in different technologies. I also pulled it into my production code base and ran it on simple things like removing comments, fixing an error in a function, adding a new API, and it worked. It doesn't always like give you the exact best answer, but if you can tell it specifically what you want to do, this is a workhorse of a model. It can just go do it. So if we take a look at this example here, again, this isn't a great, uh, a great app, but the physics actually work. I'm telling you, it wasn't that long ago when things like this just did not even work in big models. So now we have a 23 billion parameter model that we can run locally that I think if we can control it very surgically can be a really, really good powerhouse of a model. Here's a couple of the other examples that were built purely with Devstrel, purely in root code. So this is not like a copy and paste um, from using a hosted version or a web version. This was done purely in root code with kind of a high level prompt. I didn't tell it anything beyond the goal. And this does pathfinding quite well. And we also have a Sudoku solver where we can actually solve a Sudoku board and that works quite well. We have our Connect4 game, which I would say this is one that it's probably been about six months now that models have actually been able to do this effectively. And this one is not bad, but it also just starts playing against itself. So it's like AI versus AI at that point. So it doesn't actually let me continue to play, uh, but so yellow ended up winning there. And then our traffic simulator, we've got, I would say a good start of it. It did a good job laying out the grids. It's got the green light and red lights, it's got traffic moving. But I've definitely, the bigger models are better at this type of thing. Now, I did a landing page because I always like to see what kind of style an, uh, a model has. And this is what it came up with. And it's actually not bad. It's a great little starting point for a landing page. Wasn't that long ago. And maybe, heck, with some of the simpler big models like um, Flashlight or GPT-41 Mini, you might get similar things. Then I, I tried to do the Billers game, which honestly, this ended up, in my opinion, kind of a disaster. The physics do work. They do bounce off each other, but it just didn't do a good job laying out the entire thing. And then I also had it create a whiteboarding app, which I think it did a relatively good job at. We've got colors, we've got different tools, and so on. And that model is Devstrel by Mistral AI. It came out on May 21st, 2025. 
about four days ago. This is uh, May 25th now. And I've been impressed with this model as I've had a chance to run it. I, if you, if you don't know, I've tried running Quinn 3 235B A22B through my uh, evals, and it doesn't do that great a job. Devstrel actually completes them, and we're about to get into the scoring here in a little bit. But I do want to say, it really is a good model. The fact that it has 128K max context limit, and it seems to keep that context limit in check because a lot of times these smaller models will go off the rails a little bit if it gets, you know, 50, 60, 70K. But it actually, some of my evals use up to 80K context limit and it stayed on track. There were a few that I had to throw away like I do have to for any of the uh, tests that I run. But in general, this did a great job, especially if I tuned in the settings that I'm going to talk about here in a second. Which, let me jump over to that here real quick. So the one that I'm using is not the LM Studio one. I'm actually using the Unsolved one. And I'm using the Q6 underscore K, which actually has vision capabilities as well. So I actually was testing out the vision capabilities. I uploaded an image and it does a great job. It showed me uh, exactly what I was expecting uh, in there. And I created a DevStrill preset, which allows me to set all my settings really quick. I have my temperature set to 0 0.15, my repeat penalty to one. This is basically off the unsolved documentation. Min P sampling is 0 0.01. And then I have the uh, top K at the default 40. I did see unsolved did 64. I tried both. It didn't, didn't seem to cause any difference. So I just kept it at the default 40 there. And if we go back to VS code, the settings that we need to play around with here, it's if you go into your model selector, hit edit, make sure you select the unsolved dev drill small 2505. If you do set custom temperature and you're not setting it in LM Studio, make sure you set it to 0.15 and then turn off this setting with enabling editing through diffs. It will work with the apply diff tool, but it doesn't work great. And once it starts failing, it's hard for it to recover. So this is, pretty much notorious for any of the smaller models. It's just not good at apply diff. So turn this off and you'll get much, much, much better results there. Now you might be asking me, how does this compare to GLM? So GLM is a incredible model. It is probably the best coding model, but it has two flaws. The first flaw is that it only has a 32K context window which basically makes it unusable in your root code without overriding the system prompt. And then it really makes it unusable if you've got a long out like running task with multiple tool calls and things that are happening in it, even with the overridden system prompt. So that's the first one. If, if there were to be a version of GLM with 128K, I'd be very excited. The second flaw with GLM is the amount of tokens it generates. So generating a very simple landing page for using that same prompt that I did for DevStrill. Here, for example, we generated 10,758 tokens. That's a lot. Whereas if we did that same one with DevStrill, we're looking at 2,039 tokens. So huge, massive difference, but the quality is kind of noticeable. So this is the GLM one. This this top like header bar is uh, just sweet. It's sticky, so it stays there. Like GLM just has a lot of style. And the way I would put it with DevStrill after spending a lot of time with it, is it's not gonna be a model that you wanna just like vibe code something into production. Not a fan of vibe coding in general, but it will be a model that if you tell it specifically what to do, it can go do it. And it can do it in your existing code base. If it does error out at all, cancel it and start over. Now, I did actually upgrade recently to my RTX 5090. In fact, I actually just put this in. And I want to talk a little bit about this because the G RTX 5090 is freaking expensive. Uh, it is three times the price of my 7900 XTX. It uses double the power. And I would say it has double the performance on average when using local LLM models. And I think that extra 
uh, 8 gigabytes of VRAM just makes a big difference. But it is very costly. So I know not everyone is going to be able to go out and get an RTX 5090. In fact, what I'm trying to do is take money that I earned by doing YouTube and investing it back into hardware that I can use to test models. I, I use it to invest into running my evals so that I, I basically, you know, spend $100 or so to do a full eval run. And uh, sometimes even more. Some of the big models can be $50 on their, on their own. But I typically will invest all that money back into content and things to actually help the community. Now, this RTX 5090, my hope with this long term is to be able to do some really good benchmarking as more local models come out. I actually want to even play around with fine tuning a model to see if it's actually possible with a model, uh, with doing that with a model on this particular GPU. Now, jumping over to my evals. I want to talk a little bit about what these scores actually measure. And my main objective is to measure how well they work with coding agents, which if you think about it in the simplest term, if I tell you to do something, do you do it? And what's the quality of it? And the way this is judged is through a series of unit tests. And I have uh, Python scripts that are, I call them deterministic checks that verify that if I told you to do something that you did it. Combined with an LLM as a judge using Claude 3.7 Sonnet thinking, I got extended thinking turned on, and then I weight that. So what you're going to see here is scores basically on how well it follows instructions, how few tool calls it has, and just in general, is this something that you could actually work with in Rue code in particular? I would love to have the bandwidth to be able to carry this off into other agents as well, even trying it in Olama but it's just, it's very time consuming and I don't have a good way to automate the entire process right now. So I'm just limited on really cost and time. So that brings us to the evals themselves. So Devstrel Q6 uh, from Unsloth, which is the one I'm currently running locally, gets a 56.9%, which is very similar to Gemini 2.5 Flash. Now Gemini 2.5 Flash has a lot more context window and I would argue is faster. But the fact that I can get a local model on about that level of, of ability in Rue code is just amazing to me. I actually was giving up hope slightly until I started testing this model because either the good models have low context windows or the, the basically the model comes out and just doesn't work at all with Rue code. And then the Q8 version, which I tested, is scores slightly higher. So you can see a slight drop in scoring, you know, when you go down in quantization. If you were to go down to Q4, I imagine it would also drop slightly as well. I didn't have time to test all of the test suite through that. So to touch on something else here, we look at SWE1. SWE1 is another model that is a smaller model. We do not know the size of it, but maybe the SWE1 light model is around the size of Devstrel. Uh, I don't really know. But if it is, if the light version is, maybe it's double the size. It shows you that these highly tuned, highly specific coding models can actually do incredible, incredible stuff. So I'm very curious over time how this is going to play out because I think these more hyper-focused models is the future because it helps keep costs down for coding, but it also helps them fine tune it for the outputs that we particularly want. And to close out here, this is literally the first model that I've been able to run fully through my evals. When I use GLM, I can get through a couple of my smaller uh, tasks that I have, and it will score higher. It does a really good job. It outputs a lot more tokens, but it eventually blows out of the context window, even if I have it maxed. So this model is something that I would highly consider, and they even say it here, if you're a building or using an agentic coding IDE plugin or environment, Devstrel is a great choice to add to your model selector. Honestly, they are not wrong about that. And usually a lot of things that I see in these blog posts are marketing mumbo jumbo, but Devstrel actually is good. If you have a card that has 32 gigabytes of RAM, consider, uh, consider adding it. The other thing to touch on here is that there's a few settings that don't work on every model, but they seem to work really good on Devstrel which is the only reason I'm able to get that 100,000 context limit, it, which normally 
what I'll see is I can get like 50 or 60, something like that. But if you turn on flash attention, you have your KV cache offloaded to GPU memory, and then you override Kcache quantization type and Vcache quantization type to its Q8 instead of the F16, you greatly reduce the amount of memory. So this, the my scores that I'm showing you are compressed. Like it's not going to be as high quality if these were just full precision. So it makes me very interested where this model will go long-term. If there are like, there becomes distilled versions of it or new iterations of it. I'm really excited about that. But anyway, these, these three settings here are pivotal, at least in my setup with the Unsloth one, to be able to fit the full model in my GPU, all layers on my GPU. Now there are some, like you, for example, if you run Gemma, Gemma 3 and you turn flash attention on, it'll work, but then you put Kcache quantization and Vcache quantization type, you'll actually get a worse performance. So there's like a, there's a lot of testing that you need to do. So you can use my settings right out the gate. And if you find better ones, let me know. But this is a good way to kind of start. And recommend using these presets as you go through too, because it makes it easy to just swap between them for the things that you need. So as I close out here, I'm just going to kick off this task just so you can see kind of how it works. It runs relatively fast. So LM Studio right now, if I go into my server settings here, you can see that it's processing the prompt. And the prompt's going to be large because the system prompt from root code is not small. It's going to create the files properly. It's going to edit things correctly. See, so it's creating the JavaScript file. To me, this is actually really rare to have a local model working this well with root code. I actually want to try this in other AI assisted coding tools. Uh, so I may actually do that as I kind of go forward with some, my next project I'm working on, which is being able to evaluate per model, which AI coding tool works the best with that model based on my eval set. Of course, everybody's, everybody's uh, use case can be slightly different, but hopefully it gives us a data point to determine like is augment code better with Claude 4 than Claude code. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna be working on next. And I may, if I have time, try to get Devstrel in the mix of that as too, for the ones that I can actually Devstrel to. Anyway, that's gonna wrap this one up. Hopefully this has been helpful to you. And if it has, I would appreciate considering a like and maybe a subscribe. Otherwise, till next time, everyone, peace out.